Have you been struggling to pick which weapons to prioritize getting from the Into the Light expansion in Destiny 2? Well, look no further because in today's video, we're going to be going over my must get weapons from the Into the Light expansion in Season 23. The focus is going to be on weapons that are PvE end game meta and could become a staple in your arsenal in preparation for Pantheon and the final shape. So without any delay, let's jump right in. Starting off the must have list is the Forbearance Waveframe Grenade Launcher. This weapon used to be exclusive to the Vow of the Disciple raid, which is behind a paywall via the Witch Queen expansion, and has been one of the best, if not the best, ad clear weapons in the entire game for a long time. If you're an avid raider, you probably already know about the coveted god roll of Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction, and hopefully you have it crafted at this point. With Ambitious Assassin, your magazine will be overloaded based on the number of kills you get before reloading, which is amazing for spam capability on a Waveframe GL. Couple that with Chain Reaction and oh lord are you going to shred through ads via Elemental Explosion that Chain Reaction provides. The only main difference that Val Forbearance has is the Origin trait Soul Drinker, which gives the user health back based on the number of hits before reloading. So Val Forbearance is going to be a little more ideal for endgame content to help with that extra survivability. If you're able to, I would still recommend trying to get a crafted Forbearance for that reason. And if you need teammates to raid with or need raid help in general, feel free to join my community discord. We're a welcoming community open to all guardians who believe in helping one another. So we hope to see you there. But if you don't have a Val Forbearance, fear not, because for absolutely free, we have access to this weapon via the Into the Light loot pool with a few different perks. And lucky for us, it still has the Ambitious Assassin Chain Reaction combo that is so highly sought. Be sure to be on the lookout for this roll if you don't already have one. And yes, I know, Chain Reaction is supposed to be getting a nerf on special weapons in the final shape. But I think the perk will be still good, just not as brain dead as it is in the current sandbox. But obviously, we will have to wait and see. The other combo I recommend chasing is a Demolitionist Chain Reaction roll. Demo was really the only perk that was missing from the Val version, and now that it has this combo on the newer version, it may be better than old Forbearance in some cases, depending on your build. With Demo, you're going to be getting 11% of your grenade energy back on each kill, and on a Waveframe GL, yes, that is going to be very strong. Using your grenade will also refill your magazine from reserves to provide a method of spam capability between the weapon itself and your grenades thanks to the regen you'll be getting. That's even before we account for the Indomitability Origin trait on New Forbearance, which gives you an extra 5% grenade ability energy on weapon kill if you have a light subclass on, and 5% melee energy on weapon kill if you have a dark subclass on. Meaning you could potentially be getting up to 16% of your grenade energy back for each kill that you get if you're on a light subclass. So to recap, New Forbearance has a ton of ability regen capability, along with its ad clear potential, while Old Forbearance is perhaps better suited in harder endgame content for survivability. Be on the lookout for an ambitious assassin chain reaction roll if you don't have a Val Forbearance, and also be on the lookout for a demo chain reaction roll, especially for those grenade focused builds. Next on my must have list is the Hammerhead Machine Gun. With its reintroduction into the game, Hammerhead is now one of the best machine guns, arguably the best legendary machine gun. It's extremely comparable to Commemoration from Deepstone Crypt, and even surpasses Commemoration in my opinion based on your perk combo and build that you have. With both Hammerhead and Commemoration being 450 RPM heavy void machine guns, they do have some perk similarities like Rampage, Killing Tally, Feeding Frenzy, and 4th Times the Charm. Some glaring differences in perk choices, however, is that of course Commemoration has Reconstruction for example, and Hammerhead has Wewind Wounds and even Onslaught. The biggest difference that makes Hammerhead shine above Commemoration is the columns that some of these perks are available in. For example, Rampage is present in the third column on Hammerhead, while on Commemoration it's in the fourth column. Which means on Hammerhead you can get double damage perks with Rampage and Killing Tally on the same roll. This is the combo on Hammerhead I was most interested in, and if you're wondering, yes, it absolutely shreds. After 3 kills, you will proc both Killing Tally and Rampage for an extra 66% damage bonus rather than 33% extra damage bonus on a Reconstruction Killing Tally Commemoration. 
The only thing you miss out on with this double damage perk combo is some way of refunding ammo to the magazine. I found it's easier to use this combo on builds that have some sort of auto loading capability like Threat of Ascent on Strand and Marksman Dodge on Hunters. And if you're a Drafalcon's Void Hunter main, oh lord, this thing will have you shredding through ads like butter. That said, even if you do have a crafted commemoration, I would still be on the lookout for a Rampage Killing Tally roll on the Hammerhead. Again, paired with the right build, it feels amazing, but heck, even if you just wanted the double damage perks to dish out as much damage as possible in higher endgame content, you can't really go wrong with this combo. If you don't have a crafted commemoration or looking for something to emulate it, I would recommend going for a roll with Rewind Rounds and Killing Tally, Rewind Onslaught, or even Rewind Desperate Measures. Keep in mind, Rewind Rounds is more of an active method of getting ammo refunded to your magazine rather than Reconstruction being a passive method of reloading, so you'll have to pick your poison there. For me, since I have both, I probably will stick to Commemoration on some builds just because Reconstruction is an easy perk to use to reload and overflow the magazine. But when I do want to be more aggressive and pump out as much damage as I can, say on a Falcon's Void Hunter, I would definitely take the Hammerhead with Rampage Killing Tally over Commemoration. Having a double damage perk combo like this could also just be a great option to use during Master and Contest Mode level activities to shred through everything in your path. The most important weapon from the Brave Arsenal to prioritize getting, in my opinion, is the Edge Transit Void Grenade Launcher. With the recent sandbox changes in Season 23, Heavy Grenade Launchers got an overall reserves buff and a bit of a rework including a change to Spike Grenades, making them much less mandatory. I won't bore you with every detail from the twid, but just know they are much more viable in endgame DPS rotations now. And even from some damage tests conducted by the D2 community, it was found that heavy GLs can now do more overall damage than rockets in longer DPS phases. So with this high level knowledge, having a heavy GL with a good DPS perk combo may very well prove to be essential in raid or dungeon encounters in the updated sandbox we're in. Especially in preparation for contest level activities like Pantheon and the day one final shape raid. So let's take a look at Edge Transit's perk pool. There are honestly a lot of good perks here like NBA's Assassin, Auto Loading Holster, and Cascade Point in the third column an Explosive Light, Deconstruct, and Bait and Switch in the fourth column. The number one role I recommend getting is an Envious Assassin Bait and Switch role. And if you can get Spike Nades, go for it, but again, they are not as mandatory anymore, so don't fret too much about the magazine type here. The next best ones besides Spiked Nades is Alloy Casing and Augmented Drum. Both of those are fine as well. Another role you could go for is Envious Assassin and Explosive Light for general use in GMs or even in shorter DPS encounters where Bait and Switch would take too long to activate. Envious Deconstruct can be an interesting role as well for ammo refund on hits while doing DPS. And you may already be aware of the shiny versions of this weapon getting some insane combos like Envious Assassin and Cascade Point in the third column and a damage perk in the fourth column like Bait and Switch and or Explosive Light. The idea here is that you can use Envious Assassin to overload your magazine during mechanics and add clear, and then when it comes time for damage, you switch over to Cascade Point manually or via loadouts, which lets you dump and overload a magazine insanely fast. However, Bungie has come out and acknowledged this and have stated that they are going to be looking into changing this interaction soon, so don't stress too much about going for this role. The interaction may not even work. We'll have to wait and see what they do with it, but shinies are pretty rare drops anyway, and it's really just not worth your time. But hey, if you have one already, it still works for now, so enjoy it while you can. For other weapons in the Brave Arsenal, to me, they're all good, don't get me wrong, but just not as important as the aforementioned three weapons for PvE endgame in my opinion. For example, Falling Guillotine with Eager Edge and Frenzy is a great roll to grab if you want to skate faster and farther with a Vortex Frame Sword. And heck, even Eager Edge Chain Reaction on the guillotine is really fun to use, but if you already have a Slammer Adept from GMs, you're pretty much fine. And if you want to have some fun with a new mountaintop and launch yourself places and or dish out some pretty hilarious burst damage from a distance, then auto-loading recombination or auto-loading Vorpal on the mountaintop are great rolls to grab. Midnight Coup also has a bunch of good rolls and any combination with Explosive Payload, Frenzy, Firefly, Kinetic Tremors, or even Rampage is fine. 
This weapon is pretty similar to an Adept Fatebringer, so if you already have one, you could put the Midnight Coup on the back burner if you want. That's going to be it for me today. Let me know down in the comments if you learned anything from today's video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel if you're part of the 98% not already sub for more Destiny 2 tips, tricks, and guides. It is absolutely free and helps out the channel a ton. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. If you're still here, thank you so much. The support means a lot. If you really enjoy my content and want to show some extra support while getting some added perks shown on screen, consider becoming a member of the channel. Any additional support would mean the world. Also, huge shout out to my channel members here on screen. You guys are amazing and the support means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.